it says camera live, it says video starting. Are we live? I have no idea. <laughs> You're live now. All right then. All right then. End the video and create another video. Yes, everything seems to be on track as per normal. All righty then, boys and girls. Is this a bit high or low? Am I low? Hang on. What happens if I do this? What does that do? Is that better? Oh, that's better, isn't it? Technology. All right. Hang on one second while I magically dance over to this other screen without tripping on anything. <laughs> so I can click the other screen on. And are we there? Are we there? Does it say anything? Too low. I see. Humans of all ages, I think we have it. I think we have it. Kel Surprise. Tip. <laughs> Don't quit your day job. <laughs> I don't I don't know if you if you're aware of this, but people who get into show business tend to be a bit neurotic. <laughs> and if they if they weren't neurotic before they got in, it, it takes, you know, three, two, one, and they're neurotic because nobody really knows how any of this works. It's basically a crapshoot, and everybody's kind of fluffing around, looking like they know what they're doing. And that's kind of the theme. I'm, I'm you know, two days away from, well, a day and a half, I guess, a day and a half away from going to a place I haven't been in a long time, and I'm going to do a live event, um, which which is a thing I love, but I haven't done in a long time. And I'm going to, you know, get together with my crew, who I just I adore, and I haven't worked with them in a long time. So you know what? <laughs> and I'm going to meet a whole bunch of new people who, you know, people have expectations, and we have no idea why. We don't know what they're based on. I mean, we could have said anything, and they could have taken it however people take things. And so there's all kinds of um, uh, I wonder ifs going on, really. And, um, and I think it's, uh, you know, it's important to, well, look at that. Good morning, Sean. How are you? Hurrah. Alrighty then. Keeners are fun. Okay. So I'm uh, a little um, verklempt. I'm a little bit uh, confused. I've been uh, pulling things out and putting them in suitcases and taking them back out and putting things in the big carry-on buckets that you take for these events and saying, no, 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 I don't need to take those. And it's crazy. It's like I've never done this before. I think that's part of the adrenaline buildup. Um, I've always believed that there's a certain amount of adrenaline rush that we crave and for a lot of people who who have depended on live audiences and live interaction with people that uh, that adrenaline rush is a, is a huge factor in what it feels like to do the job you know uh, you know you go to the you go work at the library or you go work you know in, in the records office and there's not a lot of adrenaline going on and uh Gern, hola handsome since you say hola beautiful um it is uh, it, it is very difficult to get a sense of how other people are feeling when you're a little bit out of practice. Everybody's fidgeting in their seats. They, you know, <laughs> they're already bored, and you haven't said hello yet it's going to be an uphill climb. If they're all sitting there with their arms folded and they're grumpy, it's going to be an uphill climb. And then if they're all sitting there all excited and, you know, having a fun time, it's going to be a great show. So I'm, I'm, I'm leaning toward door number three. I think it's going to be a great show. And, and the reason I think it's going to be a great show is that the organizers at CAPE, um, Carol and Randy Sauve, who are just working their, their magic, to make this come together. They've, they've pulled together some awesome guests, um, and, and, and me, 
And they've got a great idea for the theme this year is the 80s, and they've got an after party on the Saturday night, and the theme is the 80s, and it's uh, the Sam Hill Band, and and it, it's just it's just a celebration of yay it's spring, yay we're back, yay let's everybody be careful and and cautious and not get too goofy because there's still you know show number two on Sunday. And it's going to be a huge fun time, and um, so so I guess my you know putting things together and then taking them apart and putting them here and putting them over there and running in circles, is that I don't want to let down my side of it. You know, it's yes, it's my boat, and I'm the navigator and I'm at the front. I I, I want to make sure that I I'm I'm giving the good directions because everybody's getting ready to row. So here's here's the scoop on what's happening. Um. We load in tomorrow, uh, and and by load in, um, load in is the other way of spelling hernia, <laughs> because we we have the lockers, the original lockers from the end on television, and they weigh eleven thousand pounds because they're steel. <laughs> There's no this you know modern day plastic for us. Oh no, these are the original lockers that have to be bolted together, and so first lugged out of the vehicle and then and then dragged into the building over to the booth and then assembled and then upright with uh, guy ropes and cement ballasts so that people who come over say oh my god it's the lockers and they touch the door that we, we don't want the lockers to fall on them and flatten them like it's the Wizard of Oz <laughs> tends to put a damper on the event so that's got to get set up, and then my booth has to get set up, and you know my stuff and the things I'm going to bring, and those crazy mom anniversary hats and uh, other cool stuff. It's um, it's going to be a busy, exciting time. Good morning, Steve. And um, it's so there's a lot to look forward to, and I'm I'm so excited. I'm going to be able to meet the other guest celebrities and. Uh, that's very cool. We're going to get together for a bite to eat tomorrow night to say, how are you? And how was the flight? And um, what have you been doing for the last two years? All of that stuff. All of that stuff. And um, it's, it's going to be a great um, opportunity to say hello again. Not only hello again to the fans who are going to come, who have really, really fond memories and nostalgic moments from the 80s when they were kids but for all of us who do these live events to say hi how cool was this and gosh I've missed this so the deal is um, we open I think it's around 10 o'clock on Saturday we go until uh, supper time and then we we break um, and everybody goes away and gets changed into something fabulous to go to the party and then we're back on Sunday and uh, part of the other thing that's going on on Sunday that is very exciting, that I always love, is they're going to have panels. So in case you were wondering, well, I don't know if I want to walk around with all those people. Yeah, you do, because on Sunday, I'm slotted for 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and I get an hour. And I get an hour, not at the booth, but in a, in a, in a panel where people can come and we talk. We... we have these great conversations back and forth about their memories of the shows, their memories of the time, their moments in their lives. Sometimes, you know, it starts off fairly silly and they're asking, how many times did you get slimed? And we, we get through all that. But what's really much more fun is, is the exchange, the conversation with what they enjoyed, what they were doing in their lives. Why on earth? Uh, our show or the other shows um, had such a lasting impact. So it's a real opportunity to make friends with people who um, haven't had that chance before. And, and how cool is that? And the prices are ridiculously low. So I, I think it's going to be just a hoot. And so that's why I've been all excited all week and jumping up and down and talking about all kinds of crazy things. And one of the... Um, Sean says, a panel session must be fun. It is, Sean. It is, because um, I, I have, uh, I have my, my, uh, my staging manager with me, and we have handlers 
So if there's questions, and there's a moderator, so if people have questions, you know, we can get all that organized. What's really fun is that if somebody has more they want to talk about, uh, you know, if we get a chance to talk about the whole Pivotry in Motion project, um, you know, I'm taking names. I, I, I People who come to a panel because they remember when, I want them to leave with brand new today memories. I want them to say, um, because she's, she's about 90% as goofy as mom, but there's this whole other thing going on under there, and I, I don't know whether I expected it. That's, that's the fun part. And then I get to, I get to know people um, you know, face to face by name. And that's, I mean, obviously I couldn't see you when you're watching television way back when, because TV's only kind of one way. So it's just, it's, it's like a family reunion with members of the family you didn't get a chance to meet before. It's awesome. It's just, it's such a good time. So I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not uh, intending to push this like one of those annoying, you know, um, carnival hucksters. But really, if your weekend is open and it's not that far for you to get to Cornwall, Ontario, uh, we're on the border, we're right on the border, um, and it's like, I don't know, 90 minutes from Ottawa, it's, you know, probably two hours from Toronto. It, it's, it's worth the drive. It's worth the drive to check it out, to see all the great guests. You can, uh, I have the link all over the place. You can go and see who all the other celebrity guests are. It's fabulous. And you can see all the cosplayers. You can come as a cosplayer. You can do whatever your heart desires. They have great souvenirs, things to sell. I have all kinds of wonderful crazy stuff that's souvenir worthy that you can want to buy and we're doing this awesome thing so lockers right we're going to do the selfies with me at the lockers and i'm bringing mom so when you get your photo done when you when you hand us your phone um it's you and mom and me and the lockers and you can go around you can stick your head out the door and say hey Abby or hey mom so it's a totally interactive experience it's a riot it's it's not a I'm on this side and you're on that side and we're standing there it's nothing like that it's really a good time so I'm urging you if you can you should you you, you won't regret it and if you can't make it this weekend on the 15th of May we're going to be in Brockville and I'm bringing the lockers again. <laughs> because my crew, my crew is the best crew in the whole world and I think they're terrified to say no to me. <laughs> so that's awesome. And then, if that's not a possibility, okay, save up your away time and come to Ottawa in August. Ottawa is beautiful. It's the most beautiful, beautiful place. Come to Ottawa, spend a week and come and see us on Sunday the 14th of August at Fanaticon. So Cape this weekend, Fanaticon Brockville in May, Fanaticon Ottawa, Fanaticon 3, uh, sorry, Fanatic 40th Con, 40th anniversary, um, in August. Is that a roster of shows? And, by the way, if you have connections with any other Canadian shows, any other fan events, con events, you should tell them that, um, you know, I'm, I'm a force to be reckoned with. And if they haven't invited me, why not? <laughs> and see what we can do. Okay, enough about that show. I want to talk about something that happened yesterday that, uh, it's amazing. For these videos, um, I'm thinking about a theme every time. I, I have some sort of a prop every time. Um, I have a silly story every time. And then life hands me something that I can use. And I think, well, thank you very much, universe. That was very kind of you, very generous. Much the way the universe sent me the, the mom anniversary hats on time. Yes. So here's what happened to me yesterday. I'm talking to a lovely, lovely friend. And in the course of our conversation, 
she says two things. And the two things that caught my attention told me that issues she's dealing with are probably more of a struggle because she's looking at it from the wrong angle. So I'm going to clear that up because it's part of pivotry. It's part of how we take ownership of who we are and what we do and how we win, how we get ahead of the breaking wave. And the first thing I want to say before I get into that is, is this brilliant statement. Maybe, Garen, maybe Matthew Godfrey will attend an event. You know, I'm glad you highlighted his name because he'll see it and maybe he will. Maybe he'll come home, come to Canada, come back. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh my God, that would be insane. Um, so the first thing that's really important to remember is this. Everything is a process. Nothing is a one-off, ta-da. Airplanes don't fall out of the sky because one thing happened. Airplanes fall out of the sky caused by something called a cascade of coincidences. A cascade is a build. It's a momentum. It's like a waterfall. Every waterfall starts with a drop, right? Everything is a step-by-step -step accumulation in life, everything. If you get a message that is unclear and you base every next thing you think and do on an unclear message or a flat out incorrect message, and I've said this many times to people, I'm perfectly capable of adding three and four and writing down 11 because I was driving by a 7-Eleven when I was thinking about doing my taxes. When I got home and I started doing it, while I'm writing and I'm distracted because Math and I aren't the closest friends, I wrote 11 instead of 7 and then I didn't, I didn't notice. And I didn't notice and then everything else kind of went downhill from there. I'm capable of that. It's not that I'm dumb. It's that I was distracted. It's that I was listening in the wrong place. I was looking out one window and the action was happening on the other. Easy mistake to make. It's, it's not If somebody indicates to you that this is the rule when it isn't, they didn't necessarily do that to you deliberately. They could have got it wrong too. These are simple miscalculations. And since they're all part of a process, one miscalculation can throw everything off just a little bit until you finally get to the end and it's, you know, you're way off track and you think, how, where, how did that happen? And it's because way back then, when, it, when you should have said seven and you said eleven and it all kind of fritted away from there. So, the reason, the reason I say that is because my friend said, I, I just need to get people to do this. I just need to make people um, know this and, and, and feel this. And I and it just, um, you know, I, I have to, I have to get people to. And I thought, ah, oh, okay. Our job, our job is to do us. Our job is to get us. That's it. Our job is to open possibility to other people who can then choose to get us. They can choose to understand. They can choose to say, oh, that was fun. I'm coming again. We can't force that. We can't force fame. We can't force, push, contrive other people to do 
anything because that's them. This is us. And while we're all connected, they're not operating through our brain. And I, I just like to pause here and say, isn't it wonderful that nobody else is cooking using my brain? <laughs> so getting confused or distracted, Karen says, squirrel, easy, easy for people to get distracted. We all have an attention span that's about the same length of time as a goldfish. It's about nine seconds. And the difference between us and goldfish is that goldfish aren't checking their phones. <laughs> so we're easily thrown off. We're easily, easily confused. Not because we're dumb. Not because we're, we're stupid. Not because, what is wrong with you? No. It's because the message we're receiving isn't clear. How do we clarify it? We pay attention. We focus. We try to remember that you can only do one thing at a time. You can only chew one mouthful of food at a time. You can have a lot of stuff on your plate. You can only chew one mouthful at a time. Who was that stand-up comic? Um, I loved his line. He said, eventually everything is bite size." <laughs> I wish I thought of that. Eventually, once you get it in your mouth, everything's bite size. Doesn't matter what size it is on the plate. We, we must give ourselves permission to focus, to be good at one thing in this moment. Is it fabulous? Yeah, actually, it's not bad. All right then, let's move on to the next moment and the next thing. You see how that works? Do one, <laughs> be awesome, move on. Carry, carry the ta-da-ish from that last moment. Every time you want to trick someone in a, in a good way, you can rely on, um, you can rely on the fact that people are easily distracted and you can um, count on that. I'm just going to click this and because I love the squirrel thing, so thank you. And Matthew, I'll click, I have to click all that stuff later. Um, everything that is amazing because we're focused on it is in sharp focus and we get the full value of it. Everything that we experience that we're trying to do too many things, we only, we only grab the tail ends of things and then we get panicky and we get, we get anxious because it's not working. So we try to do more. And, and that was the part of this conversation yesterday when I was talking to this beautiful friend of mine. Doing more isn't better. Doing more because I have to get them to see this. I have to, they need to understand, no. We do what we do to the best of our ability. We own it. We don't let us, it own us. We shine. We all shine. We don't try to run around and get all kinds of other reasons to make us shine. Oh, Garen. His motto is this, ladies and gentlemen, if it doesn't matter in five years, don't bother mulling over it for five minutes. <laughs> how, how do we know it's not going to be important? Is this going to be on the test later? <laughs> but I love his point. So it, this sounds like I'm all over the map, and I know that, but I'm, I'm, I'm circling in on it. I'm sneaking up on, on my topic today. And my topic today is this. Illusion and reality are two sides of the same coin. I'm not talking about people who lie. I'm not talking about duplicity. I'm talking about perception. What we see and what we think we see are two sides of the same coin. 
if we're not sure, the way we can see it clearly is to give ourselves permission to set aside the distractions for a couple of minutes so that we can pay attention. Now, I, I hope that you notice, I hope that you're seeing or hearing that I don't say, tell ourselves to, or we have to. I say, give ourselves permission to. Because this is not a terrible, terrible thing. We are not going to be punished if we get things wrong. This is our journey. We are driving our bus. We are navigating the boat. We have the team with us, our loved ones with us. We are giving ourselves permission to enjoy the living daylights out of it. That's the reason we're here. That's the reason we're on our, on our journey, to give ourselves permission to get full value. If you eat too fast, you don't taste a single thing. So why did you do that? Well, I only have 15 minutes. Then only eat one thing. <laughs> eat the one thing slowly. Don't eat 50 things fast. <laughs> so, my friend yesterday has been having a difficult time with lots of anxiety because it feels like a lot is looming. A lot is being expected. There are people who are wondering why this hasn't happened yet. The only reason there are people doing that to her, to him, to them, to you, to me, to us, is because we allow it. Because we don't police our boundaries and say, I give my word that I will do this to the best of my ability for the greatest good. And if something goes wrong, I will let you know. I own this. You don't own this. I may work for you. You may be the person who pays me. You don't get to tell me who I am and how different I need to be to qualify. Because from the moment we arrived here, we were qualified. We belong here. We are awesome as we are. And we're not awesome as we are because we're good enough. That's not the point. We're awesome as we are because we are awesome. We're not good enough. We're amazing. That's why we qualify. We have a bad day. Boy. <laughs> I have bad moments in days. I don't have an entire bad day. I don't have 24 hours of unrelenting bad day. There's ups. There's sudden sharp turns. There's surprises. There's, oh. And then, back up again. And we all do. The point is that we need to give ourselves permission to be all of that. And if someone feels they have permission to trespass our boundaries and tell us how to behave, they got it wrong. That's not the way it works. That has never been the way it works. Ever. So, I want to tell you a couple of success rules, some pivotry rules, and then I want to tell you a couple of funny stories. Okay. So, success, my definition, is consistent action repeated over time. So you do the same thing on a predictable basis with consistent excellence or ineptitude for the long haul. And people 
believe in you. They, they learn to look forward to you. Because when you say you're going to do a thing, you do a thing. She always does this. You should see every day. Always does this. That becomes something that you can count on. That becomes solid ground beneath your feet at a time when the ground is unstable. If you're one day saying, I'm going to do this, and two weeks later saying, you know what, I'm going to do that, and two months after say that saying, I've decided I'm going to do the other, people who are struggling to find um, safety and sanctuary, you scare them because they don't know what to believe now. They were all excited to follow you because you were doing the first thing. They were willing to shift gears because you were doing the second thing. Now they don't know what to do. And by the way, the laundry's finished and I need to go and find another quarter. People don't have time to pay attention to impatient shifts. I want to be a big success. I want to be famous. So I'm going to be famous doing this. I'm not famous yet. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to add sprinkles. Not how it works. We are not able to force success. We are able to invite success. I'll tell you an interesting corollary to that success thing. Consistent action repeated over time. Do you know that you can successfully get very fat if you consistently, repeatedly, eat Twinkies and cheese doodles and, and tacos and triple burgers and thick creamy shakes six times a day for a year? Success belongs to you. <laughs> it's all in how you look at it. Success is a process, a step by step. So if we learn to focus focus on one thing you know how they do this at the at the eye doctors and you find you and you find yourself going that's that's a very painful focus if you're distracted and somebody kicks you in the shin they have your undivided attention <laughs> if you are wondering if if I'm having a really bad hair day and if everybody's looking at me and um, it was raining earlier and oh god I hope I wore the right shoes and oh and this and I don't know and I wonder if he likes me and did I do I have spinach in my teeth and a car goes by and it goes through the puddle and you are drenched in 73 feet of yucky dirty slushy water you're no longer worrying if your pants look too small or if that guy at work likes you or if you have spinach in your teeth the first thing you're doing is going <gasps> and then the second thing you're doing is whatever I'm supposed to do now that's good that's called focus <laughs> we have the ability to focus we have to give ourselves permission to focus we have to give ourselves permission to establish our boundaries and look at our process and choose the steps. We have to give ourselves permission to say to people who are time vampires and energy vampires, I love you. I'm drawing a heart-shaped line in the sand here and I'm placing you inside that heart. I'm over here because I have things to do. It doesn't mean I don't love you. It means that I don't have time for the vampiring. I have things to do. We're allowed to do that. We're allowed to establish our boundaries. When you're having a great day and somebody walks into your orbit and they're all grumpy, we have permission to say, you know what? Here's the thing. I sympathize. I really do. We all have bad days. Would you please pause right now and just take a deep breath and let it out? And the person still grumpy says, why? Because I'm, I'm having in this moment a good moment and I'm not going to join you in your dark moment so take a breath 
if, if it's overlapping, if it's still overwhelming, then you need to go away and come back when you're ready. We have permission to do that. It causes the utmost damned astonishment. It truly does. The thing is, it, it resonates with people because they wish they'd done that. And how we stop that, that domino effect of people not policing their boundaries, people letting other people walk over them, people letting toxic people, energy vampires, um, take control of our moods. The way we stop that is say, love you, heart shape, you're over there. Come when you're ready. I'm over here, I'm doing this. This is the good mood boat. We have permission to do that because everything has a ripple effect. So pivotry, where I'm going with this today. Pivotry is a combination, for those of you who didn't see the video yesterday, I'm explaining this in more detail every time. When we pivot, like in basketball, we're running 11 miles an hour in one direction and something happens and we go zert and we run instantly the same speed in the exact opposite direction. And when we pivot, the, the sneaker we're wearing goes and we pivot. That's a pivot. We're, we're in the game. We're part of the game, but we're not leading the game. The game is leading us. Pivotry is how we own the game. Pivotry is how we can easily, effortlessly shift everyone's focus to the place we want them to be. We can't make people do things. We can invite them to by suggesting, look at this, as soon as they shift their focus, they're looking where we want. You see? Pivotry. How do we get them to do that? Is by profiling them. Is by thinking about who they are, thinking about why they're here, thinking about what they may be expecting. We put those ideas together and then we act and then we give them permission to focus based on those things that we know, that we assume that we know. We're guessing. And then people shift. And now we are leading the game. We are owning our moment. We never do it alone. Pivotry requires partnership. The person we need to believe, to get involved, to climb in the boat, they are our pivotry partners. If we've been doing this longer, we get to teach them how it's done. So I'm going to tell you a story that illustrates this. Two stories, actually. The first one was that when I was doing You Can't Do It on television, and I made it very clear that mom really shouldn't be allowed to cook, and everybody grew up understanding that mom shouldn't be allowed to cook, and that really mom only makes a couple of things. She either gets, you know, 50 pounds of Brussels sprouts on sale if you, if you, <laughs> if you bought another 50. <laughs> and the family says, what? And she has this massive amount of Brussels sprouts. So, so you, you shouldn't let mom really make the shopping decisions without a consultation. And the other thing is, of course, that she seems to only cook liver and lima beans or Brussels sprouts. And uh, it was so firmly implanted in people's minds that it became a wonderful joke and a wonderful topic of conversation. And one day, uh, some really good friends of mine uh, came out. I, I, had, I had bought this hobby farm because nobody had told me that wasn't a good idea for me to do. <laughs> so I was out at this hobby farm and it was, a really, it was a really cool kind of funky old place. And I invited these friends out for dinner and they said, can we bring the kids? Absolutely bring the kids. 
so um, you know, small kids and everything. So it was fall, and it was a bit chilly, and it was it was great. The leaves were changing. I mean, there were apples. It was wonderful. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna do an old fashioned kind of just comfy meal. And so I made I made uh, meatloaf, and mashed potatoes, and uh, I think I had apple pie or something for dessert, and cookies and things like that. <laughs> so the family comes and oh my gosh, mom. and and what was really weird was that the kids are very quiet. Very quiet and very polite and um, yes, Abby, uh, it's you know it's very nice here, but really quiet, which is alarming in children who are like eight, you, you, you ten, you wonder. And so, but the day went on and everything was fine. I said, okay, dinner time, let's all go in. And so you know we had wine and we had beer and we had soda pop and we had all kinds of stuff. And, and I'm I'm putting the meal out, out on the table and everybody's going to serve themselves. And when I put the meatloaf down. Um, and my girlfriend brought out the mashed potatoes. The two kids, their eyes went huge and their mouths went like this. And they started to laugh. And I said, what? And my girlfriend said, well, I didn't want to say anything earlier because it was going so well, but they'd been on their best behavior because they thought you were going to make liver and lima beans. They didn't think you knew how to make anything else. So you see, she didn't lie to them, but they'd watch the show. <laughs> so we're going to go to Abby's house. You know, Abby's mom. <laughs> we're going for dinner. <laughs> and she just let the kids come to their own conclusion. And she knew they would. That's profiling. <laughs> she got to own all of that politeness all afternoon. <laughs> because she had, she had leveraged me and my notoriety to get those kids to <laughs> it's a terrible thing to do um which brings me to the other thing which is a colossal wonderful exercise in forcing the moment without actually forcing anything so just before the 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 video today I posted a video. I posted a sketch from You Can't Do That on Television. And the sketch is with Eugene Contreras. And um, <laughs> and the title of the sketch is Toss It Off the Back Porch. And Mom is in the kitchen um, cooking, and Eugene comes in and talks to her. And he says, guess what followed me home? And Mom says, we're not keeping it. We're not keeping it. I don't care what it is. We're not keeping it. Toss it off the back porch. The kid goes outside. And then there's, well, I don't want to give the whole thing away. All through the sketch, it appears that I am making something that I'm going to toss. I have a frying pan and I'm getting it all ready. And it appears that I am going to toss something. We know mom can't cook. We don't know what she could possibly be cooking. So there's no certainty except that, and my total focus, that's the thing, it's only 30 seconds. When you watch, I, my total focus, my, my focus, a hundred percent, a hundred thousand percent is on getting this right because clearly mom doesn't know what she's doing. So there's the profile. Does mom know what she's doing? No. If she's going to try to do it, does she have to focus? Oh yeah. Does she have to focus a thousand percent? You betcha. Okay. And then he leaves and I toss whatever it is. My The frying pan hits the, a big pot that's right in front. Clang! And then I stand there looking up at presumably the ceiling, although it's not in a house. It's a TV studio, right? There's nothing up there for about a mile and a half. A television studio has a huge grid. It's like an airplane hangar. And there's lights, <laughs> all kinds of technical equipment. And I'm standing there in the kitchen looking up forever, forever. Because clearly mom has tossed something. Eugene comes in, explains what he tossed off the back porch Mom panics, puts the pan down, runs out the door, and very quickly, very quickly, Eugene picks up the pan and holds it up, and a pancake drops in it. 
So at the end of the sketch, we know what Mom was making. Pancakes. Except that Mom wasn't making pancakes. There was nothing in the pan. There was nothing I was shaking. There was nothing that had my total focus. There was nothing I was waiting for to come down. They hired me because I'm an actor. So what it gave you right up until the end was permission to assume that every one of my actions that focused your attention on what a mom is probably doing, especially if she's not a very good cook, is getting ready to flip something. That's an assumption that is logical to make. Because the message being given to you in stages looks like it. Nothing in the pan. Do you know how I know? Well, because I was there. The other thing is, just off camera, on a stepladder, was Dean Carley. Remember, remember the Statue of Liberty sketch where Mom walks through the door and breaks the lamp, and it it's cracked in half, and she I'm laughing and I can't stop laughing, and you hear a voice off camera saying, "Gee, that's a shame." <laughs> that was Dean. He made the lamp, and he only made one, and now. I've ruined it. I've ruined the sketch. Dean is the one who had the buckets of slime. And Dean is the one who had the buckets of water. Dean was the one on the ladder holding the pancake. And when Eugene came running back in, his total focus was get the pan, get the pan, get the pan. Why? Because Dean's going to drop the pancake. And if you don't have the pan, it's going to land on your head. That was, that was Eugene's total focus. That was what we rehearsed over and over and over again to get right. Did we set you up? No. We didn't set you up. We invited you to do the math and make an assumption. Did I, did I set up my girlfriend's kids? No. They watched a TV show about a character who can only cook one meal. When they came to my house, they didn't know the difference between Abby and Mom. <laughs> it's, it's the opportunity to tell a story. When you see the uh, ads on television for the holiday cruises, you don't see, <laughs> you don't see a whole lot of grumpy people. You don't see a whole lot of people whining and sniveling and complaining. You don't see a whole lot of people saying, I'd, I'd rather be home. You don't see that. And, and the thing is, they're on the boat. Those people are there. But for the commercial, you, they show you the people who are having a wonderful time. Because they want you to equate what wonderful looks like in that picture to how you feel when you feel wonderful and that your wonderful will motivate you to get a ticket on the boat. That's not lying. That's focusing. That's understanding and profiling people to get them in the boat, the boat message. This is the way the world works. This is the way we connect and communicate. And the reason I'm telling you this story today is, is a couple of things. One is, when we allow people to distract us a lot and we can't focus, we give up our ability to focus, we can't be fully present we can't be fully enjoying it. If you had never seen that sketch before, and you can as soon as I, I finish today, you can just scroll back down and watch it because it's right there. It's hysterical. <laughs> it is so silly. And the enjoyment of it 
um, somebody who, who looked at it earlier said, oh my God, the comic timing. The, the, the comedy strategy, tell half the joke, insert something, tell the other half. We created a donut. The only way we could do that, the only way we could create, produce, and polish that moment was because we had you as our pivotry partners. We had you buying in to the idea that there is a, a premise, there's an explanation, and there's a result. We had you buying into it because you loved the show, it made you laugh, and it gave you a reason to smile for the better part of the day. We offered to you the tool to disconnect yourself from the energy vampires and the toxic drama and, and, and the victim types, the helpless types who control from the one down position. We gave you the opportunity to seize your freedom and run like the wind. Seize your freedom from all that. Laugh and say, oh, God, that show is silly. We did that. That was our job. And we loved our job. It was the best part of our day. So what we can do now moving forward, the, the situation that we are in with the, you know, year two and, two and a bit of COVID is that there are, there are still uncertainties. People are trying to change the rules. They're not certain. They, they have people counting on them. So they can't just say, okay, yeah, everything that was yellow is now blue. We can't do that without trying to be as certain as possible that we don't cause further hardship, further upset, per further grief, further pain. We want the best outcome. So everything is a little uncertain. Someone the other day said somebody spat on them. And I thought, okay. Um, all of a sudden, that six foot rule makes a lot more sense, really. Um, all of a sudden, maybe keeping the mask in your pocket makes a lot more sense, really. All of a sudden, just assuming that everybody is okay doesn't make sense, really. People are going to behave badly until they feel safe. People are going to behave badly until they feel that they can count on the promises that are made to them. So the message we send, the focus we present, the processes we use, the greater our focus on making it clear, the more time we take to do our best, to give the best we've got, the greater the chance that the ripple effect is positive. And the greater the chance of a positive ripple effect the greater the chance that the spitting stops and the people start smiling and they start saying, have a great day, the way we used to. It's on us. It starts with us. We get to own it as pivotry masters. We get to own it as pivotry partners. We get to have fun with people's focus. When we learn how to profile, when we learn how to take the time and savor each bite we take into this moment. This is the only moment. There's a lovely um, artist who does a, um, a drawing called um, Big Panda and Tiny Dragon. And the conversation in the cartoon yesterday was, I'm worried about tomorrow. And the answer is, there's only ever today. 
Every time we wake up, it's today. There's no reason to worry about a tomorrow. We're good at today. We've always got today. And I thought, I like that. It's good to plan for when that becomes today. There's no real percentage in ruining the joy we're having by being anxious about it instead of preparing. Cool, huh? So, um, I, I, I won't be doing a cooking show on YouTube teaching people how to make pancakes. I, I can't... <laughs> Billy Tuma, who created the wonderful Ken Fosse um, uh, documentary, uh, for Teddy Ruxpin, said that his his idea of a great video series would be cooking tips with mom. <laughs> and I thought, I, I don't know how many caveats we would have to, I would have to have a running thing. Do not try this at all. This is, this is meant to be humor. This is meant to be a joke. I don't know how much insurance we would have to have. All I know is that my recipe has always been since the day I woke in the, up in the hospital at the age of 18, alive after a horrifying car accident, is that today is a great day. Because I'm here. I'm in it. If we can start there, even if things are terrible, if we can start there, and say, it's going to be as great as I can make it. And give ourselves permission to believe, to focus on that. Then it will. Then we all will have a great day. Because your ripple effect will become our ripple effect. It's interesting, isn't it? I find the whole thing fascinating. So, to close before the weekend, um, it's the first day of Taurus. So all those Taurus people out there, um, welcome to birthday month. We Aries, we're generous like that. Come on in. The water's fine. I have some really good, really good friends who are Taurus types, and they spend a lot of time rolling their eyes at me because... <laughs> um, so, so happy, happy month, Taurus. And, um, you know, when it's your month, when it's your real month, starting uh, in uh, a week and a couple of days, then we'll start wishing you happy birthday. In the meantime... Taurus is upon us. Um, we we have the remains of a solar flare uh, of mammoth proportions. So if you're feeling a little rocky and up and down and today, yesterday, nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, um, <laughs> it's the sun. And uh, I don't I don't know if the pink liquid is any good for that, but it's the sun. The second thing is that um, I hope you have a great weekend. I firmly intend uh, to have a spectacular weekend. Uh, my crew and I have been discussing this at some length, and our, our focus, we have profiled what's going to happen, and our focus is to cause the utmost damned astonishment and make everyone see their opportunity. We're going we're gonna to shove it right, right at them. We're not. We're not, We're gonna. You know, push our boundaries. We're gonna shove it right at them. That this is the best time ever, and this is your fabulous invitation to be part of how how wonderful it is. That's what I'm doing on the weekend, and then when I come home, I'll fall down, <laughs> I'll lie face down on the floor for a minute, saying, "Oh, my feet," <laughs> and then get back up. So, I hope that over the weekend, you have something great planned for you, just for you. Uh, my wish for you is that you thought about what I was saying in this video. I hope you think about everything I say in my videos, but in this video, I hope you thought about a very important point 
and that is that other people have to have your permission to be in charge of your mood. When they become in charge of your mood, it's because we gave them permission. We don't have to give them permission. It's our mood. We can hold on to our boundaries. We're allowed. Mom said so. <laughs> so that I hope you take to heart. And don't tell people that you hate them and never want to speak to them again. Love them. Heart-shaped line in the sand. Place them in the heart. Love them from afar. Carry on about your day. That's my hope. On top of that, I'd like you to do something for me. Um, I'd like you to comment, if you would, on your thoughts on the video today. On all of the videos, any of the videos, any, any moments that have occurred to you. I, don't, I need your input. I need your feedback. I need to know, <laughs> is this thing on? I, I need to hear and see what the impact is so that I can do new stuff or do more of the same stuff. I need your feedback. It matters. Your voice matters. Period. And it matters to me. So please, leave comments. And if not right here, at some point on my page or send me a message. You know where I am. Um, I don't have any new subscribers on YouTube. If you have an opportunity on the weekend, you say, you know, Abby's got a YouTube thing. You should check it out. And if not, that's okay. So have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And um, do something fun. The weather's supposed to be a little bit better. And um, think of Mom in Cornwall this weekend, celebrating her 40th anniversary. Think of the Care Bears joining her, celebrating their 40th anniversary. 40 years. Wow. Consistent action repeated over time. Who knew? And, um, oh yeah, be good to you. You are so worth it. And I am so grateful that you're part of this, that we're in this together. It means the world. It really does. And remember to hug your loved ones. They're amazing too. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. If you win this live video now, oh, I see. All right.